Hi everyone. As part of this problem, we have two input tables. The first table is projects. This table has below columns, project ID, that is the ID of the project, project name, that is the name of the project, start date, that is the date on which the project is started, end date, that is the date on which the project is planned to end. So every entry gives information about the project as to what is its name, what is the start and the end date. Along with this table, we have another input table that is holidays. This table has only one column, which is the holiday date. And this lists all the holidays that are planned. So these are the two input tables that we have. Now, as part of the output, we need to identify that for every project, what is the total business days? So by the total business days, it means that we have to consider what are the total weekdays from Monday to Friday. And also we have to exclude the holidays. So in a way we have to exclude the weekends and holidays. So for example, if we see for this project beta, it is starting on 5th of November and ending on 15th of November. So if we check our calendar from 5th of November to 15th of November, there is a weekend on 9 and 10. And along with that, there are two holidays, 11th and 14th. So total there are gap of four days. So like we have one, two, three, four, then this is a weekend. This is a holiday, 11th November, five, six, this is a holiday and seven. So this way we have to identify what are the total business days for each of the project excluding the weekends and holidays. So hope the problem is clear of what we need to achieve. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what we will do is we will start working on the project table. So from the project, we will take all the details like project ID, project name, start date, end date. Now what we will do is, okay. Now what we will do is we will create a new column, which we are going to start it from the start date and keep it increasing by one day till we reach the end date. And that we will achieve using the recursive CTE. So we will start with the start date. So let's use that as let's call this column as each date. And let's create a CTE here. Let's call it as project DT. So this will be our base condition wherein we are starting with the start date as the value for each date column. Now we're going to build on this. So what we are going to do is let's keep everything the same. Just that here, instead of using start date now, we are going to increment this column that is each date by one. So we are going to use the data at function. Okay. And this call will be recursive. So this will be the recursive call here. And we will stop where each date is less than the end date. So note that in this entry, we have incremented each date by one, but at this stage, each date will refer to the previous value. It will not refer to the incremented value. That's why we are giving the less than sign. Okay. It will work till it reaches to the end date. Okay. So let's now select the details from project DET from this CET. And let's order it based on the project ID to see the details clearly. So let's run and see the output. So as we can see, for every project, we have derived a new column that is each date. This is starting from the start date value and it will keep incrementing by one till it reaches the end date value. So if you go down, this project details terminates with the each date ending at the same date as end date. Similarly, for other projects, it will start with the, it will, it will start with the, uh, start date value. So let's sort it based on the each date as well so that we can clearly see 
that details. So if you see for project beta also, it will start from the start date value. It will keep incrementing by one till it reaches the end date value. So like that, it will uh, do it for each and every project. So in a way for every project, we have the entries present for each and every date that is present from start date till end date. Now we need to identify whether a particular date is a weekend or not. Okay, so what we will do is we will use the date name function. So in the date name, we will pass weekday and we will pass the parameter as each date. That is for each date, we want to determine whether what is the day, whether it is a Sunday, Monday, what is the day? So let's do this. So let's identify this. Let's run and see the output. So now for every day, every date we have identified which is that date. So if it is not Saturday, Sunday, we know that it is a weekday. So what we will do is we will create a flag. So in that flag, we will check for the value for this date name. So if this value is other than Saturday and Sunday, so if, if it is not in Saturday, Sunday, that means it is Monday, Tuesday and all. So in that case, we know that it is a weekday. So that is what we are checking here. If this is not in Saturday, Sunday, then let's call it as one as zero and, and let's call it as weekday flag. Okay. So this way we will determine whether this date is a weekday or not. If it is Saturday, Sunday, it will have value as zero. Okay. Like for example, here, if it is Saturday, Sunday, it will have value as zero, but for other days, it will show the value as one. Okay. So this way we are able to identify whether it is a weekday or not. So this is the first thing. Second thing is we have to identify whether on this particular date, it, there was a holiday or not. So we already have the holiday list in the holidays table. So to determine that we need to do a join. So we will do a left join with the holidays table. Let's give the Elias as H for this and the joining condition will be each date from this projects with holiday date from the holidays. So now for checking whether on a particular date there was holiday or not, we will check the holiday date column. So if it is null, that means there is no holiday. So let's call it as one as zero. And this will be no holiday flag. So if we are able to join successfully, there will be holiday date present, which is the else condition. So this will mark it as zero. And if, if there is no join possible with the holiday table, then this will be null. So we will mark it as one. So we are checking if on that particular day, there was no holiday. Okay. It was not a holiday date. That is what we are checking. So this way we will derive the second flag. So as we see, if it is a weekday and if it is not a holiday, that means these are the ones where it is a business day. It is a working day. Okay. So this is what we have to determine for all those entries where the two flags are set to one are the dates where it was a business working day. For rest others, it is either a Saturday or a Sunday or it is a holiday. So we need to discard all such entries. We should not be considering those dates in our count. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. So what we will do is we will consolidate these two flags into one. Okay. So we will check if the date is other than Saturday, Sunday, that is one thing. And second thing is if the holiday is null, that means it was not a holiday. So if these two criteria is satisfied, then we will say one else zero. And let's call this as business, business day flag. So let's run and see the output. So now as we see, whenever it's a weekday and it's not a holiday, the business day will be set to one. So if it is one, one, then only it will be one for other days. If any of the condition is not satisfied, it will be set to zero. 
So this way, if we focus on this business day flag and count the total entries, we will be able to find out for that particular project, what are the total business days. Okay. So what we will do is we will remove these two flags now as it is not required since we have consolidated into our single flag. Now what we need to do is we can remove this column as well and keep only the relevant columns. We will get all the columns from the project table that is project ID, project name, project start date and project end date. So we have got all these columns. Now we will simply sum this flag that we just uh, derived. So we'll sum the values to find the total business days. So we will call this column as business days and we will group it based on all this in all these input columns coming from the project table. So, and we will also remove this each date as it is no longer needed. So let's run and see the output. So there is a problem here. Let's check on the problem. So the multi-part identifier project name could not be bound. Okay, let's check on this issue. So there is, uh, that is missing here. So P, that is, yeah. So let's run this and see the output. Okay, fine. So let's run. So we have executed our query. Let's check on the output. So for every project, now we have determined the total business days, okay, by excluding the weekends and holidays. And this way we have solved the problem. This is our final solution. So let's quickly go through to summarize what we have done to reach to the solution. So what we did is we started with the base condition. We took all the details from the project table and used the start date as the starting value for this each date column. After that, we kept on incrementing this each date by one till we reached the end date. So this way we were able to derive for every project a each date column that was starting from start date and keeping on incrementing by one till uh, it, to, it reached the end date. So we had all such date entries. After that, we determined whether the particular date was weekday or not. So we checked if the value was other than Saturday, Sunday by using the date name function, wherein we pass the weekday. So this means that this is a weekday. And second thing was we joined the table with the holidays table with the joining condition being each date, which we derived here with the holiday date. So if it was matching, then definitely it's a holiday, but if it is not matching, then the holiday date will be null. So if the days are other than Saturday, Sunday, and it's not a holiday, then we will set this value as one. Otherwise it will be zero. So we just summed up the data and we counted this flag value to calculate the total business days. So this way we identified the total business days for each of the project by excluding the weekends and holidays. So please go through the video. If you found it useful, please like it. If you have not yet subscribed the channel, please subscribe and please provide your feedback in the comments. Thank you.